Friends, in the last several sessions, we have discussed Earth's internal forces and hazards associated with it and the safety factor or consideration with regard to these forces for the structure we are going to construct. We have also discussed various earth resources like soil, rock, minerals, water, etc. Also, earth's surface process and forces that affect these resources and their application. We have also discussed shallow and deep subsurface investigations with regard to our structure. Friends, but these are not enough. We are aware that, for example, earthquake. If somewhere it takes place, hundreds of square kilometer area it affects. So also volcanoes, landslides, at least several kilometer. It means, Although something, some forces that operate elsewhere can also affect our structure, whereas all those subsurface investigations which we have tried so far are confined to our site. Our ground condition below it, we have investigated fine, but the some forces some process that operate elsewhere may affect our sight. How do we understand this? Plus, often our surface and subsurface investigation is constrained. In a city like Bangalore, everywhere it is a building, roads, etc. We cannot deploy our equipment there to understand subsurface condition. Not possible. Often, thick vegetation like Western Ghat forest, thick vegetation, mountainous terrain, there are several such situations. Sites are inaccessible. In such cases, how do we understand subsurface investigation satisfactorily? Not possible. Plus, we have to consider larger area. Now, in this process, we have some geo tools come into our help. And how exactly these geo tools we can employ and explore in understanding the Earth's internal or surface process, surface forces, etc. And thus, we will able to understand our site condition better and manage. Friends, with this background, now we shall study some of the geo tools available for our application. A science dealing with application of these geo tools, especially the satellite image, drone technology, nowadays ground penetrating radar, all these are considered as advanced geo tools for our investigation. The branch which deals with application of these in general we call geodesy. Here it do not involve extensive field. Field investigation is required. It is only complementary. More of this complementary field input plus these geo tools which we are going to discuss, we process in a sophisticated laboratory with several softwares like remote sensing processing software we have, photogrammetry processing softwares we have. Similarly, for drone, we have several softwares with a computer and this software complementary geo tools which 
or field work we have done using the exclusively geo tools like satellite image. We try to understand a larger area and thus try to gain some insight from these observations with regard to the construction site. Therefore, geodesy, geo tools are so important, so handy and it become inevitable especially in a larger projects and we are going to understand and discuss this now. Geodesy as we have said it is a science of measuring and understanding the earth's geometric shape, orientation in space. It is concerned with measuring specific parts of the region of the earth. And it includes methods like surveying, just now I have said complementary surveying, not extensive surveying. In other, so far model 2, 1, 3, etc., whatever the field data that was extensive, we were able to depend on that. But in this, whatever the geo tools we employ, unless we have complementary field input, it is not possible, not possible to validate. Therefore, we do have a complementary surveying ground observation. We use remote sensing of satellite data, aerial survey, aerial photographs we do, photogrammetry that is, GPS we do, ground penetrating radar we use, many things and drone technology we use. These are all come under the geo tools and these are all part of a geodesy. Friends, now our basic study starts with the topo sheet. Topo sheet is surveyed by somebody, prepared by somebody and I am you going to use this. I am not doing any survey here. I am using the topo sheet that is my preliminary first step of investigation and making use of the geo tools whatever we just now mentioned whether the photogrammetry or remote sensing satellite application we need to have a topographic map for various purposes we will discuss how where exactly etc now what is a topography topo sheet it is a map this map portrays the object present on the surface of the earth. On the surface what do we find? There are buildings, roads, soil, water bodies, vegetation, many things, temple, hills, many things, everything. Whatever we find on the surface man-made or natural, together we find those are all shown in the topo sheet natural features, relief, topography, drainage network, water bodies, forest and other vegetation, man-made features like settlement, transport and communication network, railway road, roads, etc., building, many things we find. The location includes specific hills, the rivers, the forest, villages, towns, highway, everything is indicated in the topo sheet. Therefore, topo sheet is or topographic map is an important first hand information for any further detailed investigation. So, descriptive ways, ports, temples, these are all man-made, post office, mines, all these are all available in the topo sheet and this is generally prepared by the authorized government agency, Survey of India, headquarters is it in Dehradun. They prepare the topo sheets in various scales that we will study little later. And if we want topo sheets, we have to obtain from these agencies. They are the primary agencies and they entrust to some other government organizations for, therefore, we have to approach either that and even this is sailed through, there are various agencies 
like geological survey of india they sell this now if i have a topo sheet how do i read first i have to understand the basic features involved and there are some definite symbols are used coordinates are used some color codes are also used and there is a number system followed if i do not know any of this i will fail to understand the topo sheet to understand i must know what exactly if i show in a dark line or blue color green what exactly it means so similarly the color and the symbols we use very for road railway line we use a different symbols for highway national highway state highway like or we use a different symbols even state borders we use a different symbols for anything so that we have to and coordinates we have the latitude longitudes are shown what exactly they mean that helpful to locate the places of our interest so numbering system each topo sheet say for example 48j by 9 what exactly this mean unless i do not know for example i am interested to buy a topo sheet of my area how do i order to uh, there are no geological survey of india it is a big national body or i want to have a topography a topo sheet of some germany some part of that how do i get i must able to specify and that a number the coordinates etc i have to give that become helpful for this numbering system also follows a unique pattern associated with the scales etc therefore if i know then it become easy for me to procure the kind of data i need now in all the topo sheet yes just now i have mentioned the color codes and some features symbols what are exactly those for example we are referring to the contours see all these contours are shown in brown line now there are bold or dark okay not black bold and every fifth contour is a bold one and all these are brown color it refers to the contours what do you mean by contour contour is the line showing elevation of the ground wherever for example all along this here it is 100 200 150 wherever you go here it is a 150 150 150 where you are you go this 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 is this is 200 200 200 like this means contours represent elevation of the ground and now with the help of this i am able to understand how the ground condition is if the contour lines they are very close farther very close wherever contours are close to each other it they represent the steep slope wherever contours are farther apart they represent the gentler ground similarly specific contour patterns represent a specific ground condition example if i have a contour of say 800 900 thousand now contours make means they close with inside value slow outside value higher means it is sloping 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 it represents a basin a depression a pond similarly if i have a contour pattern of 700 contour pattern of 600 contours of 500 you see 765 765 765 765 it is sloping away from the center centrally elevated sloping in all the direction that represents the hill 
it represents a base in i am giving the cross section it represents a base in or depression similarly if contours say in slightly different i show you suppose if a contour are like this suppose 600 700 800 you see if i take a cross section of this they make v shape v shape lower values are here outside uh, inside lower values outside higher values outside higher values so cross section represents a valley reverse is if contours v shape whatever here also v shape here also v shape 700 800 900 cross section 7 inside 800 this also like this it is not the orientation it is the contour pattern inside valley slope outside valley side it represents a valley if reverse if we have contour values 800 contour values 900 contour values 1000 what happens if cross section again it's a valley oh now the same i put in a reverse way 1000 900 now it represents a hill cross section it represents a valley cross section it is v shape only but inside values are low inside values are high thus contour patterns help us to understand whether it is a valley section it's a plain land it is a steep slope it is a, a hilly section ridge etc different features if contours are very close to each they do never intersect they appear to lie one over the other example like this where here they represent a steep slope vertical cut like means clips thus a contour pattern to primarily help us to understand the ground condition one and they are all indicated by bold brown line every fifth contour is a bold and this if this is 100 this is 200 this should be 150 means 10 20 30 40 like that these are the contour intervals contour intervals help us to understand the slope condition in that area the contour give good number of information about the ground in himalaya western ghats region we know the contour patterns steep hills and probably they are not just steep slope maybe delicate land tectonically uplifted region etc okay now there are various symbols used in the topo sheet i show you the topo sheet little later what are the we have interstate highway how what is the symbol state highway the 23 national highway like this. these are all the number see interchange buildings are shown here parking area pull over or like this large bridges etc railroad etc these are north every topographic sheet topo sheet or map we provide a north line and there is a scale one is to so much like that so these are the mine these are all different symbols used in the topo sheet these are all provided in the corner of a topo sheet if i have a topo sheet like this in this corner or this corner we provide these details we have the north we have this coordinate all these are provided and these are the contours like this and different regions we see them so yes this is a typical topo sheet 
whatever I have said, friends, I could not take the picture of entire topo sheet where we had the symbol of this in this, this corner they provide. And these are all the contour lines. This is settlement with a red line, this and the roads, etc. All these. This is universal. Means whether you obtain the topo sheet of Kashmir or Kanyakumari or Bangalore. Yes, settlement is that color, river is this color, contour is that color. This is therefore. And we also follow a universally accepted symbol. Therefore, it is helpful to everybody. Even I can use the topo sheet of Germany when I go to locate something. Yes, I can. This helps us to understand much better. Now, see, this is a topo sheet of this part. Now we have the topo sheet number we have provided. I will show you in some other. And these are the latitude, these are coordinates which we have this, the scale is provided here. This is an example of a topo sheet and a reverse, etc. Yes. What is the color code on a topo sheet? Blue color, water, streams, lakes, permanent snow fields and glacier, etc. These are all specifically indicated by this color. Green, forest and vegetation. White, a general lack of vegetation. We can call a bad land also. Brown, contour line. Just now we have discussed black, man-made, cultural features, buildings, temple, places, names, boundary lines, roads, etc. Red, highway and major roads. Township. All these with a specific color. Therefore, this color code helps us to identify different features from the topo sheet and I can read. The same thing I have, which are the natural, which are man-made, specifically classified, which we have shown in the topo sheet. See, perennial lake or pond, how we show with blue lines. And intermittent lake, they are not, perhaps during monsoon, heavy rain, we have developed a pond, otherwise in other season it is completely dry lake. So these are intermittent, dry lake or pond, this is some muds, tank, bed is exposed, etc. These are different symbols we show. So narrow wash. We do not have permanent flow of water. Occasionally, whenever there is a river, a heavy rain, there is a flow like this. Wide wash, these are all. Canals like this, elevated, aqueduct, man-made, this is, sorry, uh, natural, these natural-like features. Aqueduct tunnels, these are all. Water well, glaciers, these springs, all these have a specific symbol. With the help of this, we can identify again. These are all man-made features like buildings, schools, so athletic fields, playground, built-up area, forest headquarter, range district, guard station. All these are shown. These are all man-made features. Now it is helpful for identification. We have said numbering is another pair. First one is the color code, then is the number, then is the scale, and then we have coordinate, etc. We have just now mentioned. We will understand one by one. What is that? Now, numbering of a topo sheet, how exactly we number? Every location on the earth has a global address as two numbers called coordinates. That is a primary. Coordinates means latitudes and longitudes. So, work on a numbered grid system. The principle involved in this, they work on a numbered grid system. These we have divided into a number of grids. What is a horizontal line? 
these are the latitudes these are the latitudes they run from east to west vertical lines these are the vertical they are called longitudes the shape of the earth is a spherical therefore longitude and latitude encircle with earth either as a horizontal or vertical on a global scale these are not strictly rectangular but when i take a very small area i represent them as see like this therefore in a larger they are curved like but at a local scale we take as good as this okay no latitude just now i mentioned east to west east to west starting point is equator we have equator 0 20 30 40 50 like that we have the number of lat latitude degree will be larger farther away here to here may be 10 here may be 20 may be 30 may be like this 90 like this away from equator the values increases further away from the equator all the way up to 90 degree latitude locations are given as degrees 10 degree 20 degree 30 degree 50 degree like they are given in degrees minutes etc this scheme similarly we have longitude from north to south north to south the direction is a north to south starting point prime meridian over british royal observatory that is taken as a reference 0 degree that is a greenwich city in england that is taken as the reference with respect to like this or like this these are all very important as we go towards east towards west the with respect that a time varies so as you go if here at 12 o'clock it may be 8 o'clock it may be 4 o'clock like this earlier morning first here then like this like this then here time if in india it is 8 12 o'clock here this may be still philo like this so there are 180 vertical lines like this like this like this here to here from here to here 180 from there to here another one like that complete yes vertical lines are drawn from east to west yes now this is the typical number code we follow what is that see 1 2 3 4 like that this like this this is india where we are come in contact with, or concerned with here say for example sorry for that. oh sorry so leave it sorry so these are the number 54 42 like this these are the numbers if i am interested to buy a topo sheet first i go to this is the karnataka somewhere here what is that number what is this number what is this number this number is very important first now how they are divided 12 degree 16 degree 4 degree this is one this is another similarly this is one this is another they are 4 degree into 4 degree one this block represents 4 degree into 4 degree and for that we have given a number this is very important in the scale you see that is very important so now what is that nodal agency for india is a survey of india they supply the topo sheet when i want to buy a topo sheet i must able to tell the number where this that will be easy for them to search out otherwise it is not just 100 or 1000 
tenth or more than that much of topo sheets are with them. How do they sort out that? Therefore, if I mention this number or this number immediately, then they go to that. And these are available in a different scale. This is one, this is another, this is another. These are the different scales in which topo sheets are available. Depends on my interest, I have to specify these are the topo sheet I need. This scale, this scale, this scale. Now, so if I am interested in this topo sheet, this is the scale. See, this is 32 degree, 28 degree, that is just now we have mentioned is 4 degree. This is one like this, this is another like this, this. Remember, wherever totally C, they are not assigned. Wherever they are associated with the land, this number system is followed. So, C part, okay. Now, whenever I want a topo sheet, I must mention this 53, 54, whatever the topo sheet I must say. Yes, I mentioned that one. Then that is broken into 16. Like that, again, 1 degree, 1 degree, 1 degree, 1 degree, 1 degree, 1 degree. So this is 4 degree, this is 4 degree, that is broken into 1 degree into 1 degree. Means 16, we have further subdivisions. Divide into 16 sections, 4 rows, 4 columns each of one degree, here to here one degree, here to here one degree, latitude and one degree longitude. Starting from a letter A, here A, B, C, D. So, 53 A, when I say 53 I, 53 M, they will able to select easily. So, this is the numbering system. So, when I say 53 A, he will select this, 53K, he will select this, correct? Then 53A, 53A or 53K, 53L by 6, what do I mean? 53K by 6, again this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes, this is the topo sheet. This is how they arrange and easy to locate and select and this also helpful to place order for us. For example, these degree sheets are designated by number, say 53C, this is 53C like this is, when I say 53L like 53M like this, easily they will able to. Therefore, it is not just the number followed by this. Now, it is not just that just 53B, I have said, I have said here K, here I have given the example of a B, 53B. That 53B once again is divided into further, further, correct? Each of that is 1 degree, 4 degree, now each 1 degree is further divided into like this 15 degree, 15 minutes like that. So, 53B, 3, this is the topo sheet I need. 53B, 6, this is the topo sheet here. 53B, 11, this is 11, uh, 53B, 14, this is the topo sheet. Like that, in addition to this number, that is that number, we have this number, this 50, whatever. Then C, whatever. Then I must go to that C or B or whatever. Then I have to mention the number. 53 by 3 is this. So it involves this, this, this then only I am very specific that reaches to different scales. We have mentioned just the control lines 
in the topo sheet those are very important now what is the scale of the topo sheet 1 is to 25 or 50 1 lakh one, like that different these are helpful for us now contour lines are lines that connect points that are of same elevation they show exact elevation the shape of the land and the steepness of the land the slope etc i can derive from the topo sheet this contour they never touch or cross each other but appears to touch and a benchmark is a point within the contours often you have given a triangulation station benchmark say 653 like that they give where exact elevation is now and is marked with a brass or aluminium plate on the ground it is marked BM on the map with the elevation. The map we show with the BM and like this. So, not necessarily triangular station. We have benchmark whose elevation is exactly known and that is important for us. For example, I have a bridge. Bridge. Somewhere culvert, I have a benchmark and elevation is written 453 meter. It means if I have to do any local survey like this, this as a bench reference point for me with respect to that I can generate my contour map. Example, for a dam site, I may require a contour line set at every 1 meter. Whatever the topo sheet give every 10 meter, every 20 meter, they may give that is not sufficient. But if I have a benchmark like this, with respect to benchmark, I can generate my own local by surveying my local topo sheets. At any scale, at any level, it is possible to generate. Therefore, these are helpful. Now, there are dark contour, these the bold or dark. The dark or bold contour lines represent every fifth contour line so that I can easily read them. Contour lines form V that point upstream whenever they cross a stream. For example, if they have crossed a stream like this, say the, if this is the stream, they have the V shape, they have the V shape, V shape, they and that they point in the opposite direction as the flow. If the flow of water is like this, for example, they are all V shape. They follow flow like this. So, opposite to the direction of flow of the water, they form up. So, cross section or they appear as a V. So, Contour patterns, therefore, is helpful to identify the natural features, even the direction of a river flow. Just based on the contour patterns, I can say which direction the river is flowing. Now, friends, we have discussed till now about the contour patterns. We have not studied the topo sheet exhaustively. Topo sheet is a basic step for us to go further. And now we have started exactly how to read the topo sheet, how to place the order, how to use the topo sheet. We have started and we will continue with, with we will continue with how exactly this topo sheet we can take as a base and make use of other geo tools for understanding the earth's surface process and features. Now, depending on our interest, we have different level, place or we call platforms. As we go higher and higher, our ability to see the object may become difficult. We then we use a sensors. This we now venture into platforms and sensors. We shall discuss it in detail. We will continue, friends.